All right, welcome to this segment of Bayou Time as the United States Coast Guard Marine Board Public Meeting is taking place at the Marriott uh, in Homa on the Sea Corps Power disaster that took place. And what we're going to do in the next three segments, uh, seven minutes each, we're going to show you uh, some of the scenes from the Marriott. So we now go to the Marriott and we show you excerpts. Uh, and once again, this has been a very tough situation for a lot of families wanting questions and wanting to know. Uh, so let's go directly to the Marriott and listen in. This hearing will examine a variety of different topics, including the incident, events leading up to the incident, weather, search and rescue efforts, the condition of the vessel, the owner, the charterer, and the regulatory scheme which applied to the vessel. Once we identify what contributed to the incident, then we will make recommendations in order to prevent similar casualties from occurring in the future. This may include recommendations for new laws or regulations. Our Marine Board will determine whether there is evidence that any act of misconduct, inattention to duty, negligence, or willful violation of the law on the part of any licensed or certificated person contributed to the casualty. The board will also determine whether there is an ev evidence that any Coast Guard personnel or any representative or employee of any other government agency or any other person caused or contributed to the casualty. Upon completion of the investigation, this Marine Board will submit its report of findings, conclusions, and recommendations to the Commandant of the United States Coast Guard. Again, I am Andrew Ellers, investigator in charge of the National Transportation Safety Board's investigation into this accident. The Safety Board is an independent federal agency, which under the Independent Safety Board Act of 1974, is required to determine the cause or probable cause of this accident and issue report of facts, conditions, and circumstances related to it. The NTSB may make recommendations for measures to prevent similar accidents. The NTSB has joined this hearing to avoid duplicating the development of facts. Nevertheless, I do wish to point out that this does not preclude the NTSB from developing additional information separately from this proceeding, if that becomes necessary. At the conclusion of this hearing, the NTSB will analyze the facts of this accident and determine the probable cause independent from the Coast Guard. At a future date, a separate report of the NTSB findings will be issued which will include our official determination of the probable cause. If appropriate, the Safety Board will issue recommendations to correct safety problems discovered during the investigation. These recommendations may be made in advance of this report. On a personal note, and on behalf of the entire NTSB, I want to express my sincere condolences to the families of those who lost their lives in this tragedy. The Marine Board will now take the oath Lieutenant Alger, the board recorder, has been previously sworn and will administer the oath. Board members, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear that you will faithfully perform the duties incumbent upon you as a member of this Marine Board of Investigation and that you will examine and inquire into the matter that this is now before you without partiality, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. Thank you, Lieutenant Alger. This concludes the opening statement. The board will now show Coast Guard Exhibit 1, which is a factual overview of the Sea Corps power and the casualty voyage on April 13, 2021. I will now turn the microphone over to Mr. Eric Burden, who will provide you with a description of Coast Guard Exhibit 1. This, is, this presentation is listed as Coast Guard Exhibit 1. It is intended to show the basic and factual information about the last voyage of the Sea Corps Power up to the incident as it was en route to its next job assignment. Okay. <clears throat> 
Here we have some basic vessel information and dimensions. The vessel was 175 feet long with a 103 foot beam. The vessel had three legs, which were 265 foot long, able to lift the vessel completely out of the water as is illustrated here in this picture. The vessel was able to house up to 50 personnel on board. The vessel had 19 persons on board on the day of the incident. The Seacorp Power was a U.S. flag vessel that complied with 46 Code of Federal Regulations, Subchapter L. The Classification Society was American Bureau of Shipping. The vessel was built in 2002 by Simcoe. The vessel was owned by Falcon Global Offshore II and operated by Seacorp Marine. On the day of the incident, the vessel was on charter for Talus Energy, LLC. These are the names of the 19 persons on board when the vessel departed the dock the day of the incident. This weather information was sent to the vessel the morning of the incident via email from the Seacorp dispatcher. This picture is of the vessel taken right after it left Bollinger Dock in Port Fouchon. This, uh, this slide shows an aerial view of the departure point in Port Fouchon, the last record, recorded location of the Seacorp Power, the incident site, and the destination, Main Pass 138. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll have two more segments on this meeting going on at the Marriott in Houma, Louisiana. Thank you. 